What's going on, everybody? Taylor May Hoops coming to you live and direct. Today I have a very, very special guest on Taylor May Hoops Coaches Corner. Today I have the legendary current head coach at Stetson University in Florida, uh, Coach Donnie Jones. How you doing today, Coach? Dudes, it's great to be with you, man. Appreciate you having me. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. For the folks don't know, man, uh, Stetson University is, is is in the land, Florida, man. Uh, suburb right outside of Orlando, man. Great place. A Disney World. Mickey Mouse for all my college uh, prospects, man. A Disney World, baby. Everybody love Mickey Mouse. Hey, Coach, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. <laughs> yeah, dudes, I appreciate it, man. Much respect for you, always. Hey, uh, Coach, man, today we go uh, the objective and uh, the points of conversation. We're going to talk about uh, the present state of college basketball, the NIL, the transfer portal, the pros and cons, and things you, things you look for in a recruit. And also, uh, we're going to talk about last season and this upcoming season. So we're going to start off by asking you this, Coach. Uh, Tell everybody, where did you grow up, Coach, in your athletic and educational journey? Where did you play collegiately, Coach? Yeah, so I grew up uh, Deuce, in a little small town, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Uh, grew up there in a great little community, about 4,000 people, <clears throat> high school year. Had a great senior year. Ended up getting a college basketball scholarship offer to play at an NAIA school in Kentucky called Pikeville College at the time. Now it's the University of Pikeville. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, had a great career there. Played there four years in the Hall of Fame at Pikeville College. Uh, got right out, knew I wanted to coach, and uh, and obviously from there uh, got right into coaching. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. Hey, I always like to uh, let people know people's journey, coach, because as, as you well know, coach, man, that's what exactly is coaching, man. It's a calling, it's a journey. So I always like that to uh, let people know who may not be in the position they want to be, you know, to inspire and let you know that everybody starts off somewhere, Coach. Everybody most of the time starts off in the humble beginnings, Coach. Absolutely. Uh, coach, coach, hey, man, I appreciate you. I'm, I'm excited, Coach. Uh, let me ask this, Coach. Uh, when did you realize that you want to coach, want to be a coach, uh, Coach Jones? Yeah, you know, I've always loved hoops, uh, Deuce, you know, growing up and uh, and always played all the time as a kid. And then when I had a chance in college, my college coach, you know, there's always somebody that inspires you. Uh, was a great man, guy named Greg White, and uh, been a college player at Marshall himself, and uh, just knew I, that's what I wanted to be. Uh, just put all my time in, into playing and knew I wanted to give back. So right out of college, I had the opportunity to be an assistant immediately uh, in coaching. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, hey great, great, great thing, man. Listen to teach, teach young kids, man. I always uh, make sure how you conduct yourself because you never know. With the coaches, you never know when you might might want a job and need recommendations. So that's a good, good example of, of that, Coach. It's not just what you do on the court, also your character, Coach. Uh, yes, coach. absolutely. Go ahead, Coach Jones. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, absolutely. So true. You know, you if you get a chance, obviously, to work for someone you played for, it makes it a great opportunity to start. But uh, but people are always paying attention. I tell young coaches that all the time, Deuce. So make sure you're – showing up every day and doing your job and working and connecting with people and opportunities will come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But once again, I'm with uh, Taylor May Hoops Coaches Corn. I got Coach Donnie Jones, current head coach at Stetson University. Hey, Coach Jones, let me ask you this, Coach. Uh, how many years have you been coaching and uh, where are some of the uh, places you coached at? Yeah, Deuce, I, I know I look young on this uh, Zoom, all right, but 36 years in college uh, I've, been a, I've been a coach. My 36th year – I'd say I coached at my alma mater as an assistant, went on to Marshall, uh, was an assistant there six years, uh, went on to Florida with Billy Donovan, uh, coached 11 there at the University of Florida. and we, we won a couple national championships back to back. I left, got my first head coaching job uh, where I hooked up with uh, a guy you know pretty well in, in Big D. And uh, we went to uh, Marshall University. Uh, I was there three years. Got the job, University of Central Florida, and uh, then I went on to uh, – I was with the Clippers for a year in the NBA, and then I went to Wichita State, Dayton as an assistant, and this starts my sixth year at Stetson University. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Coach Spade. Let, me, let them, young, them young bucks know, Coach, man, you, you've been around. Had to pay your dues. Uh, like I said, been the head coach and then had to go back and be an assistant coach. So uh, I bet you, man, coaching keeps you humble, Coach, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really does. Uh, yes. You, you got if, if you're not humble, uh, you're going to be humble. There's one thing that's going to happen, right? So it's it's one of the two. <laughs> well, coach, 
No, but no, but seriously, man. Uh, coach, let me ask this, man. You spoke of uh, of Coach uh, Billy Donovan. Coach, uh, how was it working for Coach Billy Donovan at the University of Florida, Coach? Yeah, you know, Deuce, it was, uh, you know, unbelievable. Obviously, Billy's a, a guy you work with, not for. You know, he's a he's an everyday guy, hard worker, uh, great basketball mind. You know, he had a, a great work ethic. Uh, you know, he's a great evaluator, too. So I think in being around him and watching him build a program like he did at the University of Florida, uh, when we went there, they'd only been to four NCAA tournaments in 79 years. And uh, 10 out of 11 years I was there, we went to the NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, had some great players that played there for us and went on to play professionally. And we were the team of the decade in 2000 at, at the mm -hmm. University of Florida. So, you know, Billy's just an everyday, humble guy, great competitor. Uh, his focus and work ethics elite, that's what's made him good. There's no secret to this game, as you know. Uh, the great <laughs> ones at that level, uh, they've had success uh, by how they work, how they treat people, and how they can build teams. And Billy, Billy checks off the box on all those. Oh, yeah, Coach, you brought up something, man, and, 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 I, and I do this, like you say, to educate, you know, the parents, players, and coaches. And I tell my son this, man, that, hey, it's no secrets, it's success. I always tell him he's 14, just getting uh, started in basketball, DJ, and he, he I tell him he watches videos and things. I say, hey, man, it's no – I say, Steph Curry does the same drills that you do. I say, the only difference is that he does them all the time at a higher rate. You know, that, that's it. You know, I say, he does the same. You know, I say, if you watch him, he's doing two handball dribbling before the games are. You know, you see – a guy like Paul George, he's doing the form shooting, coach. These are NBA guys that's doing the basic fundamental things, coach. And, yeah, and, there's no question. Oh, coach, coach, I'm gonna tease you, coach. I'm gonna tease you, man. Uh, my son right now, one of the drills, coach, that that he does, and I still call him this. He does that. I learned working working your camps, coach, is is the winter wiper drill, coach. You know, to help him with you in and out. <laughs> he, he does yeah. that, coach. That, that that's his okay. routine, coach. That, that winter wiper. And then then when he first started, coach, I had him doing it, but we know you know we don't have typewriters no more. I used to have him do the typewriter, you know, with the fingers or whatever. <laughs> and I told him, he said, where are you getting from? I said, hey, man, work with the camps, man, in Central Florida with Coach Jones. So he called the typewriter. And he looked at him. I said, well, I said, where's well, the Texan drill? Like you Texan, man. I know y'all have <laughs> typewriters anymore, man. So <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's ancient now, typewriter, right? Yeah, it's like, like a payphone. What's a payphone? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. Well, well, hey, guys, hey, once again, Taylor May Hoops Coach's Corner. I got Coach uh, Donnie Jones, uh, head coach of Central University. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, let me ask this, Coach. Uh, how was practice like every day uh, with those uh, national championship teams in Florida, Coach? Yeah, very competitive. Uh, obviously, those guys are uh, elite competitors, uh, incredible focus. Um, those guys, uh, they had a different pace about them, like most championship teams do. Those, those guys really wanted to be great. They felt like the underdog every day. Uh, they had something to prove every practice, uh, every film session, uh, every win, every loss. Those guys showed up for more. And it was a, a unique mindset. Obviously, we did it back-to-back -back with the same team. Only one of four teams in college basketball to ever do it. And uh, those guys were uh, elite and went on to be great pros as well. Oh yeah, no doubt about that, Coach. Uh, that that, lead, that leads me to my next question, Coach. Uh, uh, who are some of the great players on that national championship team, or just some of the great players that you coached while at the University of Florida that went on to play professionally or in the NBA, Coach? Yeah, I had a bunch of them. You know, I've been fortunate overall all my career. I've had twenty three guys play in the NBA, Deuce, and uh, ten wow. have been first round draft picks. Ten of wow. Them. So, uh, you know, Udonis has them, you know, played 20 years in the NBA, won three world championships. Mike Miller uh, you know, won a couple world championships with the Heat. Jason Williams, White Chocolate. Uh, yes, sir. Went on, won a championship. Uh, David Lee is an NBA All-Star. Mo Spates um, was a part of that team. And then, obviously, Joe Kim Noah, Al Horford just won a world championship again with the uh, Celtics. And then Corey Brewer was, was on that team as well. And – um, yeah, we had some uh, some elite performers during that stretch here that ended up being uh, pretty good uh, for us at Florida. Matt Bonner played for the Spurs, won a couple championships. So we had some uh, great guys. You win with kids and win with great people, uh, Deuce, and uh, was no secret to why. Uh, we had great coaching, obviously, and Billy and some great people on our staff. But obviously we had some elite kids. Oh, yeah. And the, and the most important thing that I, that I try to tell folks, Coach, that we're going to keep touching on, Coach, is that, yes, you got talent, Coach, but in order to have great teams, Coach, guys have to buy in. 
And so this says a lot about, you know, the type of guys, you know, that, that college coaches or that in the case of you guys, the guys that you recruited, uh, I've, you know, being blessed to be around your coach, you always speak of that. When you speak of those guys, when we're talking, you, you very rarely talk about their talent. You always talk about, you know, Deuce, what, what type of great guys they were and, you know, what type of, you know, relationships and bonds, you know, that you had with them, you know, even if it's Joe Keem or whoever you always talked about, you know, just what type of, you know, good good people they are. And it's evident because when I work camps, those guys will come back. You know, Jason Williams would be at your camp when he was at Marshall in Central Florida or what have you. So character, man, I keep trying to tell people character, man. Character is important, coach. It really right. is, uh, Deuce. Yes. It, it wins. Character wins, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, well, Coach, let me ask this, Coach. Uh, who, influenced, who influenced you the most as a coach? Yeah, growing up, um, you know, obviously my high school coach was very influential, but uh, when I went on to college, my college coach has probably been one of them, uh, for sure, who inspired me to really get into college coaching. And for that, I've been fortunate. I've had some great mentors, a guy named Brendan Sir, who was an NBA coach for 45 mm -hmm. years, back-to-back mm -hmm. -back world championships. Um, with the uh, Detroit Pistons is one of my really close friends to this day. We speak every day. And obviously, mm -hmm. Billy Donovan's been huge influence to me. Larry Scheid, you know Larry Scheid. He coached your, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. uncle, <clears throat> DT, mm -hmm. uh, who's a great friend and uh, an inspiration. And then, you know, just the people I was fortunate to work with. Anthony Grant, head coach at Dayton. Been around some great people uh, who's had great influence on me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coach. Oh, yeah. Once again, man, Taylor Man Hoops Coach's Corner. I'm on with Coach uh, Donnie Jones, head coach at Stetson University. Coach uh, Jones, we're going to keep it on uh, as far as uh, basketball side as far as uh, that. We're going to move into the X and O's. Coach, uh, what is your offense, offensive and defensive philosophy? How do you like to play, Coach Jones? Yeah, we like to go up and down. You know, tempo's everything. You know, I think kids want to play in a style play like that, Deuce. I think, you know, we've been top 25 in the country in offense the last three years. Um, We've had some really good, you know, guys can shoot the ball. You know, we run a lot of ball screens, open offense. Um, you know, we're trying to, you know, we scored 90 some points in the championship game here in the ASON this past year. So I think, uh, you know, we give a lot of freedom. We, uh, we got a lot of guys can uh, put it down, create shooters, um, a lot of ball screens, offense that we run. Uh, but I think it's a fun, up tempo style play. Okay. 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 What about for us, uh, defense wise, coach? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, we mix it up. You know, we press. Uh, you know, we, we run a lot of different zones. Uh, and, man, uh, I think we're a team that's always changing. Uh, I, I really don't uh, – just not a man-to-man, -man, lock you down defensive team. I think we do play that. But I think we're going to be a team that's going to give you something different all the time. And I think uh, we love to change and we love to confuse as much as we can uh, defensively. Well, hey, well, you know what, Coach? I'm a teacher, Coach. Hey, you need you need another uh another, another detail, another Hassan White side back there, man. That makes defense look real good, don't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I need DT to be my assistant again. He made me a good coach. So you got that guy at the rim. You can do a lot of things. He can block a few shots in his day, right, Deuce? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Hey, I saw him not too long ago, man. He still looks like he's in pretty good shape, Coach. He, he, he slimmed yeah, he down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he looks good. You know, he's lifting weights all the time now. He looks like a bodybuilder, you know, he, but he's down here in Miami. So uh, he seems like he's doing well. <laughs> well, Coach, hey, let me ask this, Coach. Uh, we're going to move on, Coach, to what uh, the hot topic, Coach, as you well know, Coach, that everybody uh, is talking about. Uh, the present state of college basketball, the NIL, the transfer portal, Coach. We're going to start with the NIL, Coach. What are your pros and cons of the NIL and uh, your, your take on the present state of college basketball? <laughs> Yeah, you know what is uh, it's really changed fast here the last three years, Deuce. I mean, it's been it's it's drove out a lot of older coaches, you know, trying to figure out how to adjust to the to the new model. Uh, it's not going away, and so uh, coaches like myself have been in this for thirty plus years. You got to be able to adapt and adjust to the landscape. Um, you know, now you got to be able to get kids. Uh, every year is a one year contract, uh, so it's you got to be able to come in and teach you got to be able to come in and still build uh, and try to grow your team quicker and uh, making sure you got guys can come in with some experience and especially at our level you know we've lost you know we lost five starters last year that went somewhere mm -hmm. else for nil money uh you know the, the money at this level is not the same as the money at the next level and it's always going to be a challenge so uh you, you got to be uh resilient uh you got to be able to still rebuild your teams and, and be able to put people together to have a chance to be competitive every year. But I don't think it's 
it's not changing, and uh, obviously it's only only going to probably get uh, harder, uh, especially for schools at this level. But at the next level, uh, it's going to be very competitive, and it has been already uh, with these changes. Okay, okay. Well, Coach, you kind of, you kind of sound like every everybody I've interviewed. You know, I've been had the pleasure to interview Josh Pastner and Sean Woods, some other college coaches. And basically, you guys say the same thing, Coach. That you know that it's not going anywhere. And that basically, you know, it's like a uh, it's like a one year you know contract, what have you. And even I think uh, jo uh Coach Pastner uh, kind of talked about how he thinks that you know we just need to quit you know acting like we don't know what it is you know and just go ahead you know it's a contract and you know let it be a year by year renewable contract you know and and, and start making it you know a ten ninety nine you know coach you know they an employee coach you know one hundred percent you know nil you know what it stands for right Deuce now it's legal right so <laughs> <laughs> so we just need to know it is what it is so. Uh, and now it is, and that's it's just where it's going to be. And you know, hey, uh, what what we like and don't like, uh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's 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 now about the kids, and it should always be about the kids. Uh, I'm all for kids having an opportunity, and just making sure we can find some kind of uh, parameters to put around it best we can, mm -hmm. just to give everybody. Mm -hmm. a, there's never going to be equal, no matter what word they say. It's never been equal. So uh, <laughs> we just got to figure out how to survive. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, Coach, let me ask this: uh, what, What's your take on the, uh, the transfer portal, uh, DJ? The, uh, the pros and cons. Yeah, you know what? It's uh, you know it is a tough thing. You know, I I think kids should have a freedom to go and play where they want to. Uh, how many times can you transfer? How can we say what the what it should be? Uh, obviously, everybody's saying you know how you grow kids if you try to coach them and you know they don't like what they want and they can just quit and go to the next place but you know what that's the reality in life i mean let's just be honest if we don't like our job we can quit and take another one tomorrow uh it just makes it really hard from a commitment standpoint uh to, to keep your team even in the nba you got a contract you got to honor for a couple of years sometimes so at least you know who you got coming back it just really makes it uh very difficult to assemble a team on a consistent basis and uh but uh but, you know, the transfer portal isn't going away either. I think kids are going to have the freedom to, to do what they want. So uh, I think it's important to get kids that want to be here and uh, try to coach them up. And if they don't want to be here, you got to get the next ones. You know, it's not football where you need 50 players. You, you really need about seven. There's a lot of good players, as you know, uh, just mm -hmm. in your state. Uh, you could ride up the road and go up to your gas tank and probably put a team together in a day. Mm -hmm. you know, so many good players. So I think you just kind of understand – that and uh, uh, just keep building on what you can control. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally agree, coach. You, know, you can't cry about it, coach. Like you say, you just got to adjust because you've been blessed to be on both sides, coach, where you've been at, you know, bigger universities that, like you say, may have, you know, larger budgets. Now, you know, you had a smaller school, coach, where it's not that, not that case. But like you say, hey, don't complain. That's a life skill, coach. You know, that I tell my students every day, you got to adjust it. Like, don't complain, especially when things are not going to change because the NIF and the transfer report is not going anywhere, coach. So you got to adjust. It's not, going to, it's not going anywhere. And somebody else will be coaching the team when you leave. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> uh, oh, they're going to have a hey. season. Hey, Deuce, they're hey. going to have a season with you without hey, you. Hey, 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 coach, there you go, coach. It, it, it's, it's like we leave a team, coach. Did 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 the uh, next coach come in, coach? You know, uh, back in the day, with your players, coach, the players recruiting. He goes twenty five and whatever it is and wins a, a conference championship. Everybody looks like man, he had a great season. And, and you, you as the form coach, like. Yeah, I'm not really hating or knocking at the guy, but hey, those were my players. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was a question. It's like my daughter says, Hey, Dad, we lost all of our players. I mean, who's gonna be the leading scorer? Well, we'll have a new one this year, right? There's gonna be a new <laughs> leading scorer this year when they're all gone. So uh new opportunities and uh, you know, new chances to play. So you just gotta keep keep building and growing, and that's really what what's gonna be key uh for people to be successful in this business. Exactly, Coach. Well, let me ask this, Coach. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, evalu evaluation things of that sort. So, uh, in your experience, Coach, as a D1 assistant and a head D1, D1 coach, what are some things that you look for when evaluating a player or a prospect uh, or, or a prospective prospect, Coach? And do you look for the same things, whether it's a high school or a collegiate prospect? Yeah, you know what? You know, now it's changed a little bit now, Deuce, because of the transfer portal. Uh, so, now you have a chance to get an older kid. Uh Okay. But I think for the most part, I think it's still the same qualities. Obviously, they got to have some talent uh, to okay. your style of play. You're trying to fit it uh, with whatever it may be. Um, and, you know, for me, that's high IQ, high skill level. And uh, obviously, a, 
a uh, kid that uh, loves to play, uh, has some toughness about him. Uh, what skill does he bring to your team in, in helping you? Um, you know, what is the upside for a kid that maybe it's going to help immediately be a freshman that we're taking out of high school? Uh, what can you develop? And what skill will he have walking through the door to help you immediately? Uh, so I think, uh, you know, but with that, that still goes back to character, still goes back to a circle, his people around him. Uh, you know, is this, is he think he's bigger than this place or better than this place? Is he a kid that, you know, you can think, Hey, will he stay one year, two year? I don't think you get caught up in that. I think my whole thing is, is trying to make you as good as you can be. And if you're marketable and you can get that next step, then I applaud it. No different than what we did in Florida. If you could come in and be a pro in one year or two years, we helped you go pro. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, same here with me in a school at this level. If you come here to Stetson, I had a kid, Jalen Blackman, four-star player. You know, he got uh, recruited by everybody this past year, and he went to Miami and, uh, you know, got a huge NIL deal. And But, you know, for me, he was player of the year. He was, you know, newcomer of the year. He took us to an NCAA tournament. I mean, that's success on both ends. So now you got to be able to get the next guy that can come in and produce. So, so we're just always looking for guys we feel can impact and uh, – and obviously got a great feel how to play and high skill level and a high IQ, a high toughness, a high character. Uh, those are the things, Deuce, I would say, uh, is the DNA we would look for in a kid. Okay. okay. Coach, you brought up some very good points, especially for the, uh, the uh, level of kids I deal with, the high school grassroots uh, kids. Uh, speak with the coaches. You brought up a good point that you need to know is that when you're recruiting a freshman kid, it has to be a kid that has some type of skill set to come in and help you immediately. And I was speaking to a sports management guy, Al Johnson, uh, had him on, and he said he said that's one of the things that when he's looking for a guy that you know he's helping you know in the recruitment process, that something that he asked him, he tried to figure out is something that hey, what can you do right now? If college, if if, if worst case scenario, uh, Coach Donnie Jones had to put you in the game for ten minutes. What what can you do? Are you a defender? Are you a shooter? You know, are you a playmaker? And you just kind of alluded yeah. to that as a freshman coming in. What 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 can you do right now that I can say that I can tell my assistant coach I can hang my head on? Hey, hey, I can put him in. Hey, he's gonna he's gonna defend or hey, he's gonna rebound for us or whatever the case may be. So that's a very good point, uh, DJ. Yeah, no, it really is, and I think that's just all being truthful. You know, I recruit four star kids right now that, that could come in. They could play now as a freshman here, or they could go you know, be a part somewhere else, you know, where you want to do. So you just got to change your model and what fits you and where you're at. And uh, we're looking for those kids that went to the high major route. I got a kid from UCLA, Wake Forest, Minnesota, Tulane. That's my roster. And mm -hmm. uh, you're saying, wow, how'd you get those guys? Well, they went to those spots and did not play. And now mm -hmm. they got to play. They got to play somewhere. So it's, mm -hmm. it's great to take the money. But at the end of the day, you got to produce. And there, yep. and there comes an expectation that kids got to realize it all sounds good in the recruiting process, but now you got to perform. There's an expectation, all right, with that. Mm -hmm. And when you're not performing, there'll be another guy that will have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's life. <laughs> so we're also learning as young kids coming through the gate. You know what? That all sounds great in, in the signing, but now when it comes time to produce and perform, there, there becomes a different pressure on kids as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's the thing, Coach, that like you said, and I know you do this, Coach, you're very, you're very transparent, you know, when you're recruiting players with the parents, things like that. It's like, hey, I, I, I told you, you know, what, what I expect out of you and, you know, hey, those expectations not being met, you know, it is what it is. And that's a life skill, Coach, because all college basketball is and also going to college is just preparing you for life. So just a dress rehearsal for life. So just like if you're on the job, you know, you're working in a sales job and, they brought you in, Coach uh, DJ, because you got this great resume and you graduated from the uh, Stetson's business uh, uh, program, what have you, but you're not producing, you're not selling enough cars or whatever insurance policies, then, you know, it is what it is, Coach. That's life, Coach. You got to produce, Coach. Yeah, people but, sign you for your skills and your talent, but then it comes down to production, right? <laughs> so that, that got you yeah. in the gate, but now can that keep you in your spot? And that's the key mm -hmm. in life. That's the key to life, Coach. Well, once again, I'm here on Tony May Hoops Coach's Corner with Coach Donnie Jones, head coach at Stetson University. Hey, Coach, let me ask this, Coach. Uh, what, are some, what are some things you feel players should be focusing on uh, to prove their game on the court that can make them a more recruitable uh, prospect, Coach? Yeah, well, I just think, uh, you know, you got to be able to shoot. There's, I think skill okay. level is important. Shooting is important. Um, and I think, uh, obviously, uh, High skill level, as high skill level as you can get uh, from passing, shooting, dribbling, as high as you can get gives you an opportunity. Now, as you grow with your size, if you have it, as you get stronger, 
all those things, you know, just make you better at what you do with your skill. Uh, but as you're going through that process, if it be to gain weight or when tall enough or whatever it may be, you know, how, how do you impact winning? Uh, and I think, as we mentioned, how, how do you impact your team? If you're a big guy that just don't have great skill right now, but you dominate rebounding, all right? Do you mm-hmm. dominate with how hard you play? and defend mm-hmm. you know i mean what why why would i take you what what makes you play how do you help wendy so i just think with kids um you know everybody's caught up get with the trainer get with the trainer no i'd say get and play with people decision making and knowing how to play the game uh is so vital i, I see that less and less uh, with kids coming through the door because they've all nothing against trainers it's okay that needs to be one piece of your game uh but you know back in our day Dude, we didn't have many trainers. We just balled at the park, man. You know, mm-hmm. hey, man, we would have worked on our game and uh, become who we are. So trainer's a bonus. If you got one of those guys can teach you. But just that can't be the end of a uh, uh, ball, uh, a be-all. So I think you just got to make sure you're continuing to know how to play the game. It's so cute. It's so key to what we do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coach Bad. You know, I'm going to bring my son up again. Hey, like you say, he's just now starting to play in – I'm just teaching them ways, Coach, that because everybody wants to score, want to be Steph Curry, what have you. And one thing I tell them, I say, hey, number one, understand your role. Number two, be a star in your role. I say no matter what it is, but understand your role. We just had this conversation before, before I, we came, I came on with you, Coach. And I told him this. I said, at, at, your, at your age, your skill set, Coach, because athletic plays football, basketball, runs track, you know, run, runs a 200, you know, you know, you know, has athletic ability or what have awesome. you. But but the thing about it is, like I say, skill set's not there. But I tell myself, hey, you know how you can affect the game? I mean, coach with love. I said, hey, I said, rim run. I said, defend. I said, rebound. I said, teammates and coaches love guys to rebound. I said, because if you rebound on the offensive end, you're giving your team extra possessions. And if you rebound on the defensive end, that means that your team don't have to play defense. You rebound and you get back on offense and we don't have to play defense no more. I said, coaches love, love that, man. I said, how can you impact the game without scoring? And he's been playing a lot and starting. Probably not the best player in his position. He won, He came one day. He asked me, DJ, he said, he said, Dad, I didn't score any points, but I hardly came out the game. I said, yeah. I said, but you were rebounding. I said, I said you were defending, blocking shots or what have you. He's like, oh, I said, yeah. I said, that's what's important, you know, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, impact and winning. Impact winning. Exactly, Coach. Exactly. But, Coach, uh, let me ask this, Coach. Uh uh, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk a little bit about last year's uh championship season, coach. Uh coach, take us through last year's uh championship season. Did you and your coaching staff uh expect to be that good and to make it to the NCAA tournament, coach, in the beginning of the year? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? We uh we thought coming up, you know, it's like any year, you know, we've been hit back to back years with people coming in okay. and signing and signing our players. And so and we lost a kid in August, a uh, big kid that was a senior. We thought was gonna be a huge force or center and went to Oregon in August. Uh couldn't replace it. Uh the other guy that started at that spot blew his ACL. Uh so we we started off the year and, and we lost some kids and we thought, golly, we're gonna have to we had a chance, I think, to be in that top four. Uh, but I didn't know where we could come together as a group. But uh, this group came together, and uh, we just got better. We had some key wins early on, beat UCF at UCF, and um, we had some uh, big non-conference wins to uh, beat Charlotte and a few other teams there. It gave us some confidence. We got in league play, and um, we got injured again. We lost another kid. So we just had some crazy things happen to us, and uh, we, we hung around. We finished second, had a chance the last game to win the regular season, and we lost. And this group just kept growing. Uh, Deuce, we were the best team, obviously, in our leg, uh, but we won the most talented team in our leg. Uh, we had two really right. good guards. Uh, the kid, Jalen Blackman, was probably the best player in the leg, obviously, averaged 22, 23 a game. But, uh, you know, we, we we stayed together. We had two big wins. Uh, the semis hit a three to win it, and, and obviously we won at the end against uh, Austin P to go to the tournament. So first time in 53 years. Uh, here at Stetson University, never been to an NCAA tournament. We'd had 22 losing seasons in a row before I arrived mm. here. So we were one of the probably five worst programs in college basketball at one point. So to mm. see where we've come with our kids and, and how we've grown and come together has been remarkable. And that's a credit to a lot of these kids that stuck around here. Uh, we started three kids that never had a scholarship offer except Stetson uh, until they came here. So I think it's a, it's a great 
message about how we can come together. And all five of those kids signed with their last year in COVID to another uh, program bigger uh, for more money. And so with that, it gave them a chance. We graduated all of them, all five of them. And uh, so I'm happy for those kids. And and uh, obviously we're excited about this year. we got a lot of new players, nine new players on my team. So uh, we're getting ready to practice a little bit. So it's been a lot of teaching, a lot of teaching, <laughs> Deuce. But it's all good. Oh, man. Hey, Coach, man, Coach, I know you got to get the practice. But good Lord, Coach, I got to get your props on that, Coach. Good Lord. I always teach about this, man, when you had that remarkable season. Uh, I, I was teaching. I shot you a text. I was like, hey, Coach, I know I know you got a pay raise. You say, just more years, Coach. You say, just more years, baby. <laughs> yep, time is money, man. Just need time, right? As we get older, we just want to just, just stay around the game as long as we can, man. It's a blessing. That's for sure. Oh yeah, coach, no doubt. And coach, man, uh, I apologize. I'm gonna go back to back to a question I forgot to ask you. Coach talked about uh, process. Sure. Coach, so let me ask this, coach. Uh, what is what are some things to feel players focus on too much, uh, Coach Jones? <laughs> yeah, you know, scoring. I think you mentioned it, Deuce. I really think scoring's important, but you know what? I think they focus too much on that. The shots. Um, I think guys worry about you know, all the attention, thinking they get on that. I think you get recognized for that, but. You know, I think there's so much more in the game that we focus on as well is how we feel you can help us. Um, but I think that that's a focus that a lot of kids, uh, you know, making the great plays, the highlight plays, are worried about the Instagram videos and uh, all the highlights all the time. I think that may spark your interest, but you know, I think real evaluation begins with uh, the other things. Guys really can see, hey, yeah, he can score the ball, but how else can he impact when he's not scoring? And uh, I think there's a lot of things uh, – Guys don't focus on can you guard your position? Uh, what's a two way player? Uh, you know, so a lot of times uh, guys get caught up in thinking, hey man, I can I could shoot it, shoot it, but I can't guard it. So if you give up thirty and <laughs> score twenty, then you're minus ten in the net. So you gotta. Yeah, so I think, yeah, as you mentioned with your son, I think it's just so vital uh, the kids continue to develop their overall game and and how they can continue to. Uh, you know, play with good players too. A lot of guys go to schools and they average 30 a game on a bad team, right? And you're like, how's that translate when you come to college? You've never passed anybody before. And now you got to, <laughs> now you got to figure out how to, how to fit in on a team. And it sometimes takes mm -hmm. kids a long time to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Coach, that, Coach, that's a really, really good point, DJ. Like you said, uh, play, if you can't play play around good players, like you say, Coach, where you have to, like say, share the ball to play the team concept. I always tell my son this, like he was playing on the team early, uh, early during the season, Coach, and he was, and which he's, which I'm just be honest, Coach, he's developing, and he was the best player on the team. So you know, as a coach, DJ, I'm scratching him like, holy, I'm like, whoa, something's not right about here. And, and I told him, I told him, I said, okay, that's fine, and Danny, but now he's on the team where. He's probably one of the least best players, but like you say, he's learning how to play and develop, like you say, and understand the role, coach. Because before he was coming down and shooting is not a strength, coach. And he was jacking up three. I'm like, I'm like, hey man, that's not what you do, son. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to do the things you're not good at. That makes you look bad too. And I think that's important is to know who you are. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of players don't know who they are. They're trying to be somebody somebody else wants them to be. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, once again, uh, Taylor May Hoops Coach's Corner. I'm on with Coach Donnie Jones, head coach at Stetson University in Deland, Florida, baby. That's outside of Orlando, Florida. Disney World, folks. Mickey Mouse. Hey, everybody loves, <laughs> loves the dream, baby. Hey, and seriously, uh, Coach Jones had a dream season the first time Stetson made the tournament in 53 years. And like he said, hey, this is not him trying to uh, just promote himself. These are facts that hey, that they were probably uh, uh, statistically one of the five worst teams, you know, in the country before he came in. So, hey, great uh, uh, great just uh, 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 shout out to him and his coaching staff and the great job they're doing on his ability to turn around programs. Uh, coach, let me ask this, Coach. Uh, last season was a great season, but I know you're a guy that likes to live in the moment. Coach, you know, live day by day, live in the moment. So, Coach, tell, tell us a little bit about uh, this year's uh, team and expectations for this season, Coach, with this team. Yeah, absolutely. You know, well, I think biggest thing is, uh, Deuce, you know, they'll probably pick us down to the bottom of the league just because we lost everybody. So much of the unknown. So uh, I think this this school and this team that I've created here and this program has always been about overachieving and uh, and not expecting anything, earning in everything that we do, uh, how we approach every day, how we share, how we love, how we serve each other and uh, try to be great uh, teammates as well as great players and just try to 
take the me to the we, right? And how how, mm-hmm. how do we translate that no matter who the individuals are? So now it's just learning the, the brotherhood thing now about how can we build a team quickly that trusts each other, uh, that, that can buy into to the roles uh, that we're creating right now. And, and, uh, and, you know, as you go through that, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of good pieces here. We've added to this team. We're big, uh, you know, we got two seven footers and, you know, we got two, we got three other guys, six, nine or six, 10. We're big athletic and we're skilled. So I think big guards were, were built different probably from top to bottom. The most talent we've ever had here at Stetson. Uh, does that translate to an ASUN championship? No, uh, but it's going to give us a chance to compete physically, athletically, like we've never had before. Okay, okay. Well, Coach, man, that's good to hear, Coach. Uh, <laughs> Coach, uh, you talk about the brotherhood, what have you. I know, I know, I didn't uh, uh, see this question, but let me ask this, Coach, uh, real, real fast. Uh, how has that changed? You know, with now, you know, you having uh, pretty much, you know, players year by year, what have you. Uh, has has it made that any harder, any more, any uh, more difficult building that bro- brotherhood, building that you know that that team camaraderie that you know athletics and, and being part of the team uh, is, is about, coach? Yeah, well, you know, time is always an, an important thing when you you build trust with people. But I think okay. you know how can we get in here now and 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 sell every day to these guys okay. about you know what you come here to do? Can to, you know winning brings opportunities for everybody. <laughs> in this business and, and in life and sometimes just how oh, I'm a, I'm a, you know, almost a salesman every day, you know, about what can happen. And, and now we, they've seen that it has happened and it is possible. Uh, but you know, how do we trust each other? And, uh, obviously, you know, we do a lot of team building stuff, but, but really it's, it's teaching kids how to connect and trust and buy in. And some do uh, quicker than others. And sometimes they don't, there's no magic formula for it. Uh, but it's just really <laughs> what your culture is every day. And culture is what you're doing. It's not what you're talking about. And so kids see it. They feel it. And, uh, you know, I think one of my strengths as a coach is being authentic and being able to mm-hmm. relate and connect. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that that's just through serving people and, and being truthful to people and holding people accountable, but also loving them through it. And I think that's what we, we try to do every day. And hopefully that bleeds off on who we are as a group. Oh yeah, oh yeah, coach. Well, coach, hey, I'm gonna get you out of here, coach, so you get to practice, coach. Uh, on the way out, coach. Uh, any advice for uh any young coaches who are trying to move up in the profession to the college ranks, or even any young assistants like yourself, uh, what was in the past who's trying to move up, maybe in the college ranks to assistant to a head of a coach position. Any advice, coach? Yeah, absolutely. Connection, do so. You know, I think if wherever you're at, you know, if you're in a Dallas or Houston or or. Orlando, you know, one local colleges, make sure you're going over there and watching those guys work out, uh, find a mentor in this business, somebody that you feel assistant coach, sometimes head coaches are harder to, to be accessible sometimes, unless you have a prior relationship with someone. Uh, but I think just continuing to find and connect. If you want to be in college, you're going to have to find some mentors and keep showing up, keep learning, let people know who you are. Uh, help everybody you can. Uh, if you're a high school coach and you've got players, you're trying to help coaches get players, uh, just serve, 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 man. Uh, people don't forget who helps them. And you earn your reputation. Anthony Grant was an assistant at Miami for, for many years. So was Frank Martin, who's head coach at South Carolina and now at UMass. But Anthony Grant was assistant Billy Donovan met him when he was an assistant in Kentucky and was so impressed with him he gave him his first job. So, as you know, uh, I think it comes down to relationships, but you got to make sure you're getting out there and people know who you are and how you can help them. Exactly, Coach. Exactly, Coach. Well, hey, I had the great pleasure today of talking with the interview with Coach Donnie Jones, head coach at Stetson University in Florida. Uh, coach, man, you know, before we go, I can't let you off the hook, man. I got to let everybody know uh, how much you mean to me and how far we go back, Coach, because seriously, uh, one of the things that I try to instill with my players, coaches, even, you know, Myself, coach, uh, being a role model mentor, you know, I try to let them know life is one of my things. Life's all about communication and relationships. And just let them know that uh, been known Coach Jones, man, 20 plus years. Uh, uh, used to let me work camps. My uncle was assisting with him uh, on two occasions. Uh, like I said, when he was at Marshall University, man, I, he let me come to Huntington, West Virginia, baby, come down there and work camps. Absolutely. And when, he at, when he's at Central Florida, the same thing, man. So always being a great guy, always give me advice. Uh, always uh, help me out in, in any way that I always need, man. Just let it, people know that uh, when I do this, I tell people, people always ask me, DJ, like, 
Coach, how do you come up with the people that you have on? And I say, it's very, very simple. I go by the guys that I have relationships with, the guys that rock with me, support me. You know, that's 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 who I, who I go with. That's just what type of person I am. Coach, they ain't on built upon, oh, this is the next hot coach or hot player, whatever. It's all about relationship. Anybody that I have on, you know, if you if you uh, have the pleasure of listening to to the uh, interviews, you'll see I always do this. Now it's always, man, uh, Coach Taylor, a deuce been on this guy since, you know, this this, this uh, day or what have you. And as you can tell, Coach Jones, man, calls you by my family nickname, Deuce. So they let you know that we, that we family and that that is love or what have you, man. So, Coach, I just Absolutely. want to appreciate you, everything that you've done for me. You take the time as a schedule. I know you need to get, get to practice, but I appreciate you, Coach. You know you're my guy, man. Great luck on the season, Coach. Hey, keep doing what you're doing, Coach, man, because you're doing a great thing uh, in the coach profession. Coach, like you say, showing people how, like, like you say, you don't have to be in the – so-called, you know, plus the best situation, but you make the best of the situation that you're in. And you make a so-called situation not that good, a great situation like you have. And when you leave, Coach, everybody's going to want, want that coaching job extension, Coach, you know, because you made it a, <laughs> a, a landing spot now, Coach. So, hey, shout out to you and your coaching staff, Coach. Appreciate you, Coach. No, Deuce, you're the best, man. I appreciate you. And uh, so much respect for you over the years. You know that. And uh, thank you for your friendship and what you've done and, and what you continue to do. And uh, I know you're impacting and helping kids, man. I, and I love that and respect that about you. And always here to help you, man, anyway. So uh, much love always. Appreciate you, Deuce. Well, hey, man, I got I got to do this to you, man. I do this to everybody, man. Who who interviewed Coach uh, Donnie Jones today? Who interviewed me? Yes, sir. Today? Yes, sir. Uh, Deuce, Deuce Taylor, man. The, the man with uh, one of the greatest ability to evaluate kids and impact kids. Deuce Taylor, Taylor made all the way. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, coach, I, I appreciate you, DJ. Hey, no, but seriously, coach, good luck. Good luck on the season, coach. I'm let's get to practice. Hey, tell the family I said hi. Tell the wife and tell the, uh, the son and daughter I said hi, man. And, and tell your son, man, I'm hey, keep it. on balling, baby. Keep on balling, baby. I'm checking him out. <laughs> He's balling, baby. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Coach. I'll be I'll be coming to see you soon. Coming to see hey, your you know, son soon. All right, appreciate you, coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Deuce. All Talk right, soon. man. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.